Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're starting off back at the chapel and we're gonna commission the system and get it all up and running. So the electrician's been, everything's all wired in and actually he's done a fantastic job, which is really good because I feel like Bailey really pulled this one out of the bag. So just to compliment it, the electrician has made a good effort to make sure this is all looking superb like the pipe work. So yeah, everything seems to be on wired. So hopefully it's just a case of us servicing this oil boiler. Uh, because it is a used second hand one and getting everything commissioned, setting up the underfloor heating actuators upstairs and it should all be done. So what we're going to do is we'll strip this down, change the nozzle over, make sure it's all clean and get it fired up. Okay, so what we're gonna do is pretty much carry out full service on this boiler before we get it operational, just to make sure we don't have any hiccups when we first commission it. So the best thing to do is isolate the power, get the top cover off here, obviously have the front cover off. This is a Vortex Eco Utility 2635. This isn't the boiler that I would generally recommend. It's the one that's been supplied by the client. So it's the one that's going in. These boilers are range rated depending on the nozzle size that you install. So we're gonna make this 35 kilowatt. So we'll be putting in uh, the 60 ES by 1.00 and obviously altering the pump pressure to suit, which I'll show you shortly. So first thing I'm going to do is get this uh, cover off the um, heat exchanger. So 17 mil nuts. So in general, I just like to use a socket set on oil boilers, makes it a lot easier. Uh, than using a the spanner, so yeah, let's get that cover off. Okay, so we've got the heat exchanger cover off, and as you'll notice, like most oil boilers, it's in a little bit of a mess. So <clears throat> you've got these things in here, these are called turbulators. So on most of these condensing oil grant boilers, you have these in the top heat exchanger. All of these need to be removed, uh, brushed off and cleaned. When you put them back, you need to make sure that you put them in vertically like so. Um, so we'll take those all out individually. Generally, the bigger the boiler, the more turbulators you have. Um, so before I actually get too messy, I'm gonna remove the burner, otherwise I'm gonna drop uh, a load of crap all over this. So let's get this air tube or air intake tube out of the way, get the burner out, and then we can start hoovering it out and cleaning it all up. Okay, so onto the blast tube and I need to get this removed. So the way we do that is we've got three securing screws, one here, one on this side, one on that side. You don't need to fully remove them, just loosen them up and then this whole thing here will twist off and that'll give us access to the nozzle and electrodes. Okay, so the service on the board is pretty much complete now. Um, we did end up changing the hose. I just thought it'd be better just to put one of the biofuel ones on. Um, it seems to be a lot more flexible than the old standard braided ones. So yeah, it's all been cleaned inside. Uh, nozzle's been changed. Bailey's just adding the inhibitor to the system and finishing off some of the labeling and getting the uh, red lever valves onto the hot and cold water. So we're not actually doing a domestic plumbing on this one, like the bathrooms, the builder is taking care of that. So we need to make sure that it's quite clear how to turn the water on and off. So yeah, pretty much there, can turn it all on now. Looking awesome. Okay, so now we've got the boiler all operational. I just want to get the underfloor heating circulating. It hasn't actually been on at all yet. 
So what I need to do is make sure we're not running it at a stupidly high heat that might damage the screen. So down here you've got this uh, TRV type thermostat. So if I drop that down to 30, um, just while we initially run it for a few days. So the, um, the wiring stats, they are not synced, I believe, although they are on. So what I've done is I've opened up the PCB of this uh, wireless wiring center and uh, I've just flicked all the dip switches up here. So what that does, it just manually opens all the zones. So as you can see here, all these actuators are starting to open now. And then I can start to adjust the uh, flow rate, which is specified on this diagram here. So I can get that all set up and get this all nice and warm up here. Okay, so we've moved back over to the listed property over in Kent. We're just finishing off all the insulation on the main pipe runs on the first floor and we're gonna start looking at phase two. So phase two is installing a combi boiler on the other side of the property using existing pipe work. The problem is, originally that wasn't supposed to be happening and a lot of the copper pipe work's been ripped out by the builder, so we need to identify what the pipes are, get them capped, pressure test them, and hopefully we can still use them. Okay, so we've moved over to the other side of the property now and in this cupboard here is where there used to be a hot water cylinder and an oil boiler over on the left. So we were not privy to this, we've not seen it at all. We're told that it has been ripped out recently. So what our job is really is to identify all the existing pipe work, try and work out what everything is, pressure test it all just to see if we can actually still use it and if possible, um, there's still a combi boiler in here, so an oil combi boiler down here on the corner. So, this is what we've got to work with at the moment. So, we've got some 28 mils cut down at a low level, which should be flow and return central heating, but we've also got a RAM 22, so I'm not exactly sure what that is at the moment. It might be the hot water to some of the external buildings, so um, we'll check that. And then up here on the top left, it looks like the um, plumber who installed it um, initially has actually labeled, uh, labeled them up. I don't believe this was a builder. So we've got hot X and heat X, which I was assuming it was external, but Bailey's probably rightly guessed that it's expansion. So hopefully we can do away with these two. Looks like this might have been the cold feed from the header tank. And I'm not sure what this is at the moment. Hopefully um, that might be the cold feed to the cylinder so if that was a cold feed we might be able to tee back into it somewhere to get a cold down into this room so uh, yeah so that's the plan for now we're going to test all these pipe work and um, hope for the best okay so we're having a bit of trouble locating the cold water tanks but we just found them up at the top there hidden behind those planks of wood so i'll just climb up this ladder and show you what we're dealing with so on this side of the property it was just a vented system uh, regular oil boiler and standard vented cylinder so we're going to be pressurizing it but the good thing about the Navian oil boiler we're going to be using is you can actually reduce uh, the pressure in the central heating on the pressure sensor so allow it to run at sort of like a low central heating pressure so the problem we've got is although we've got hot feed down to that um, boiler room we need to get it cold so it's almost like a combi conversion at the moment we need to um, tap into the cold main link it over to the cold feed that would have fed the cylinder and that's going to give us our cold main uh, down in that little boiler room so it's a bit tight in here we're going to start removing some of the insulation um, and just see what we've got to work with okay so we've just dropped downstairs now and on the um, stairwell going up to that room where we were just in the um, this little cubby hole here, there's a main stop clock in it. So what we think is happening is this main stop clock here is going up to feed the two tanks, which kind of makes sense because this is off here. And then this pipe here is our cold feed to our bathroom. So hopefully it might just be a case of linking these over. 
Okay, so I'm back up where the water tanks are and unfortunately that stopcock with the water main in that um, cubby hole is actually totally dead. So the plan's kind of changed a bit. So what we was gonna do is tap into the cold main here that's feeding these two cold water tanks and then tee in to the cold feed um, to the bathrooms and also the old cylinder cold feed, which would have actually give us cold main down in the boiler room. So the issue we've got at the moment is we've actually got no way of getting a cold water main down to where we want the combi boiler to go. So in the meantime, what we've done is we've just linked across the old uh, cylinder cold water feed and the cold feed that goes to the bathroom. So basically what that means is we've got a way of providing uh, flow to the bathrooms once we get a cold main into the boiler room. So at the moment, that's literally the only alteration I need to do. I've literally just um, elbowed those together for now. The rest of this can um, just be decommissioned and taken out. I'll get these two pipes over here capped because there's a bit of residual water in there still. I don't think this is ever coming out. Um, <laughs> you see how tight it is. Uh, so yeah, so at the moment, that's the stage we're at. <coughs> Bailey's just um, beginning to get some um, uh, pressure gauges and pipe work on you know, on the central heating down where the boiler is going to go and we can get the central heating pressure tested but yeah at the moment regarding the cold water and hot water supply that's all we can do at the moment okay so i'm now moving to one of the bathrooms on this side of the property so this new combi boiler is going to pick up uh, one bathroom on the ground floor as well as a kitchenette area uh, that's located adjacent to this building here so um like i said we are using the existing pipe work so bailey's just getting all the pipes ready in the boiler room uh, for pressure gauges to go on he's just making a couple of jigs and then i'm just in the ground floor bathroom i'm just having to cap the existing pipe work so you can see here where the builder decommissioned the bathroom, just quite a lot of the pipes were all bent up. So I just need to re-expose the pipes further down, get them capped, and then we'll be able to pressure test it. So um, the client is aware that this is risky putting a combi boiler on all this pipe work. A lot of it is just buried in the screed, but that's the route they want to go. Um, so I'm happy to do it as long as I'm happy with the pressure testing results. But at the end of the day, I can't take any responsibility for the existing pipe work. So what I'll do is get these all exposed, get them capped. By the time I've done that, I'm sure Bailey will be ready and we can start air testing it. Okay, so Bailey's just getting all the old pipe work ready to be pressure tested. He's just adding some spigots of pipe on um, so we can add the gauges and lever valves. Same up here, just capping the pipes that we're not using. And again, just dropped a bit of pipe down there so we can get the pump onto it. So it's looking pretty good so far. Um, nearly there now and we'll start pumping it up. Okay, we're just getting all the pipe work pressure tested now, so we're only air testing it at this stage. So we're doing a hot circuit first, that's the smallest circuit. Um, it seems to be holding that four bar absolutely fine at the moment, which is great. And then I guess we'll move on to the cold, and then we can do the central heating. So the central heating might be a bit more difficult because we believe we might have some open pipe work that runs through into the other side of the property, but we'll find out shortly. So at the moment, it's all looking good. So we've just um, pumped up the central heating and it's absolutely fine. We had one open end which we found early on, um, so it wasn't too much of an issue. So quite a productive day, all the pipe work's been identified and it's all been air tested. So we've got the okay from the client to get the boiler in. So we can move away from this job for now and move on to the next one. Okay, so we've now moved back down to the rural renovation, the toilet and the towel rail have turned up so we can finally get this master on suite done. And that's pretty much all we've got to do here other than snagging, um, just commission the oil boiler again, make sure everything's still okay with the settings. But we're pretty much finished on this job now, so it's been quite a big long job. Hopefully when everything's all decorated, I'll give you a walk around, show you all the bathrooms, etc. So what we've got to do today is We've got an arcade Burlington toilet to fit. So we've been waiting quite a long time for this. I don't know why, but there's quite a big delay on it. So that's just gonna be going there. Um, we've got this traditional style towel radiator going over there in that corner. So we had a little bit of an issue with the radiator valves because the depth between where the radiator valve sits 
and the support, the valve was almost overhanging, so that nut would have been in the wall. So we found some that seemed to work okay. So yeah, we'll get that marked up and get it hung. Okay, so I'm just getting this arcade toilet all set up. Now, on this one, we're having a lever handle flush, so it's important to remember not to put this fill valve in the way, so quite often you'd spin around this way, but it's gonna be in the way of the flush there, so. Also, you've gotta angle the um, <coughs> siphon so that you can actually get to the um, fixings that are holding it to the toilet. Um, I've just lined it up against the back wall, so because we've got paneling here, and the skirting's already on. I'm just having to cut the skirting around the pan. So I've just trimmed that off with a multi-tool. And what I'm gonna do is push the toilet back and the fixings through the floor. I'll just mark a line with a pencil and then I can pull the toilet back out, get the toilet fixings screwed to the floor and then that'll be nice and secured. I've just cut the saw stack back. I'm actually using a short flexible pan connector on this one because it's a back to the wall toilet. It makes it a lot easier when you're installing it. And then yeah, that should be good to go over then the uh, copper pipe, which we've just checked, it does line up nicely. So we'll put a service valve on the um, fill valve of the toilet and then elbow a straight bit of pipe up and that'll be done. Right, I've got the service valve on and I've just soldered up the copper elbow. Um, I just wanted to show you because I've had to cut out the paneling, so we've obviously got the skirt in and the MDF, the fixing point is almost buried into the wall there, so I'm not really gonna be able to get a fix in and then cover it with a shroud, so it's still got a little bit more to go back into the wall, so I've had to do that, so that the back of the pan actually sits flush against the panel in there, so I'll have to um, speak to the builder about that, and we'll probably just have to silicone it all in. It's actually pretty tight in there already because it is um, supported by the skirt and everything. But um, obviously I've got to get the fixings into the top, so that's just screwed straight into the MDF, so grab some washers for that. So all I've got left to do is, I just need to put this flush handle on, which matches the rest of the stuff inside this bathroom, like the shower valve over there. And I'm assuming we've got a black toilet seat going on. So yeah, that will all be finished in a sec. So while I've been doing that, uh, Bailey's installed the towel rail, so. <laughs> It's actually looking really, really nice. You can see there's literally minimum pipe on show, so the valves pretty much touch the shrouds, which is awesome. And actually, I really like this one. Obviously, really handy for getting your towels on, um, and it's dual fuel. So, yeah. Other than that, we're just waiting for a brass spout for the downstairs cloakroom, and we're pretty much done. So hopefully, that will turn up soon.